how to make or how I made a downdraft table. Let's get into it. I started by cutting four x fours down to 34 and a quarter inch, or three quarters of an inch shorter than the final table height, which itself is just slightly shorter than the table saw height, as this downdraft table would also moonlight as an outfeed bench top. With four of those cut, I then cut the cross bracing out of two x fours. Aligning the two x fours on the flat garage floor, I created two identical frames to connect all four legs. I stacked one frame on top of the other to establish a close to level height by which to anchor the legs in place. Then used multiple wood screws to tie the legs into the top frame of the stack. The unanchored bottom frame became the framework for the tabletop. I marked three quarters of an inch from the top of the interior sides of each corner to give me a mark to aim for when establishing the placement of the tabletop in relation to the legs. Using the marks, I clamped the top of the frame into place before anchoring it to the four legs. Note that the top of the legs sit just below the top of the frame. This is so the downdraft surface and the framework will be flush. Before turning to the downdraft surface, I needed to create a cabinet base for the lower frame. I trimmed some MDF to size. Then, for the cabinet, I rough cut three panels from 3 quarter inch ply before refining the dimensions on the table saw. One back panel. And two side panels. I anchored the two side panels to the bench frame. Then drilled some pocket holes in the back panel before securing it in place. With the cabinet ready, I used a small sheet of MDF to create the downdraft chamber, cutting a 10 degree bevel on the front and back edges to create a slope when screwed into the side panels of the cabinet. I again used pocket holes to place it. To create the downdraft surface, I measured and marked perpendicular lines 2 inches apart. Then used a 1 inch Forstner bit to create a recess at each intersection. To encapsulate the downdraft chamber and to anchor the vacuum source, I cut a front panel piece and marked the interior edge of a dust collection port. Using a Forstner, I cleared the circle. Then secured the panel before anchoring the port into place. With the chamber ready, I got to work on the pull-out trays that would organize all of the sanding goodies I'd use at the table. I used a level to mark the placement for the drawer slide hardware within the cabinet. Then used some screws to hold the hardware up as I screwed it into place. I anchored the mirroring hardware to either side of the simple drawer tray. With the tray in place, I whipped up a quick drawer front.
and replicated the same process for a bottom tray. For the left side of this workbench, I've got big plans. Subscribe and ring the bell to catch the interchangeable router table station I'll add over here on the next episode. For now, let's just add a coat of paint to match my other workbenches because why not have some fun with it? I used a clear gloss to help seal and protect the downdraft surface. As with everything in my shop, I use levering wheels to make the workbench mobile. Time to get organized. It may not seem like much, but compared to being scattered across the floor anytime I was finishing a piece, this small step of organizing my grit discs and finishing materials is huge. And that's a wrap for now. Next time, I finish up the left side of this workbench with a router table station. Don't forget to subscribe. Until next time.